Welcome to Catholic Truth. Someone has tried to debunk us here at Catholic Truth. His name is Jack Smack. <laughs> Jack Smack. Credible. Jack Smack 77 has tried to debunk Catholic Truth and he made a short video uh, trying to debunk one of our videos. And he's not the first one to do it. And other people have tried, but they only had like 200 views. It was in a dark room. The audio was terrible, so we didn't bother with it. Uh, but this one's actually not much better. Um, but we decided to have a crack at it anyways. This one doesn't even have video. It's just audio. So anyways, let's get on with this and see what he has to say about us. Oh, and you, you may, might have noticed the thumbnail where, you know, we're wrapped in flames and we're going to hell like every other Catholic out there. Like Keith Nestor, you have a video about you too, Keith. You're going to hell as well, uh, according to this guy, and you are in flames. So yeah, <laughs> this is clearly the kind of guy we're dealing with here, anti-Catholics who love to condemn everyone else except them. So let's have a look at what he says. So let's take a listen to what this guy has to say, and then I'm going to expose him as the unsaved Catholic devil that he is. Here goes. In this short section, right at the beginning, he says we're going to expose the unsaved devil that he is. Now notice <laughs> the flames in the thumbnail. Expose that unsaved devil. You know, the people who are going to hell. This is the way that extremists work. This is the way that cults work. They demonize everyone who is not them and in the most extreme way. You don't see most channels, even people who debunk others, even like Mike Winger or Gavin Ortland or Catholic Truth. We you know they don't go around. We don't go around calling everyone who we disagree with the devil. We don't say everyone's going to burn. You know, we don't put them, you know, their head in fire. I mean, literally this is how cults work. It's mind control in some ways. It's emotional manipulation. It's how Jack Chick works in his cartoon tracks. It's how their videos work with ominous music and fire and all of these other things to, to kind of emotionally manipulate you. Much of this comes from fear though. Much of it comes from pride in many people. Much of it comes from emotional issues that haven't been resolved in a lot of these people. They have issues that have gone on and unresolved and it's coming out in unhealthy ways. Yes, they might try to love Jesus, but it's not in the right way and it's coming out in ways that are not Christ-like. But let's get to the heart of his argument against us, which is a little bit rough. So hang in there. That doesn't make any sense. The Bible says that if you keep doing these sins, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Look at what Galatians chapter so what this guy's basically saying that's it <laughs> that was the clip a whole sentence of a long talk a whole sentence a whole 10 seconds if that and he's only going to give one more sentence later on as we'll see in a second so we're talking a 20 25 30 minute talk here and he pulled out two sentences we're talking total 15 seconds out of 30 minutes like Literally, notice he doesn't even play the context. That's not the kind of person he is. Notice we were about to quote scripture. It says, you can find this in Galatians, chop. He chopped it off right at that moment so you didn't even get to hear the scripture. Protestants are always accusing Catholics of not quoting scripture, not going by scripture. And then he's the one chopping off scripture. Didn't even let me back up my point. He didn't even give you the full context because that's the way these anti-Catholics have to work if they want to have any chance or any point at all. Okay, but let's continue with his point. What this guy's basically saying is that if you just keep sinning, then you're not going to heaven. What this means is that this guy is as saved as an unregenerate atheist who's never believed on Christ. He has the same eternal fate as somebody like that because according to him, sin can cause a person to go to hell. And this tells you several things. Number one, it tells you that he does not have a savior. Number two, it tells you that he has rejected the payment Jesus made when he died on the cross for our sins, and that's what all Catholics reject. That's why they re-crucify Christ every week at Mass. Now notice, he says, I'm unsaved and hellbound because I believe that we can lose our salvation and I don't accept eternal security. In fact, no Christian in 1500 years did, but we'll come back to that in a second. So he says, I'm unsaved because of this, because I don't go by scripture, except for the fact that I was about to quote scripture. And I did quote scripture several times over, but he cut that off so you wouldn't know. He took 
this small little tidbit and way out of context. Both of these sentences make it look like we're saying one thing instead of another because he took it way out of context, but you wouldn't know what we're actually saying because he only played a sentence. That's what the guy at Wretched Radio does. We called him out on that too. He caught a, cut a guy off on a half a sentence. Half a sentence he cut him off and then just decided to tear him apart after that. So we had to address that. Now, what did I base my argument on to say that we can lose our salvation? And he didn't like the fact that I said, if you continue sinning, you will lose your salvation. You can't continue sinning and choosing to continue to do these big grave sins against Christ. He's, and he says, that's just ridiculous. But what did I base it on? Scripture. What did he cut off? scripture. So I'm going to read to you just so you can see what the Bible says. His argument is not with us. His argument is with the Bible, with scripture, because scripture says that if you do these sins, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Don't believe me? Let's look at it. It says this, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfishness, ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. I don't know how the Bible can be more clear. If you practice these sins, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, it can be backed up and fortified by 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, which says the same thing. Also, Revelation 21 and many other verses, Hebrews 10, 26, 27, 28, says that if you continue to practice uh, and willfully sin against God, you lose the sacrifice which Christ has done for you. There are many verses, almost 100 verses, that say you can lose your salvation, and he ignores all of them, but especially this verse which he cut off, which clearly says, now notice, there's a lot of sins here, adultery, fornication, these are not from God, I don't murder, uh, drunkenness, heresy, I mean, these are not from God, how can anyone practice these willfully and still enter the kingdom of heaven? They can't because these things are not from God. Now notice, he's talking to believers here. He's not talking to or about unbelievers. He's talking to believers. And he makes no distinction between believer or unbeliever. He just says that there's a war between the flesh and the spirit. And he's talking to believers here. He's saying, don't live in the flesh. Now people will say, oh, but once you're saved, you can't. Whatever, because Paul says you can, which is why he's warning you against it. And he doesn't make any distinctions. He says, if you live in the flesh, you will die in the flesh, even if you think you're saved. Anyone, he says, who does these things will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But of course, he cut that part off in his video. I mean, does this sound like someone who's really interested in truth? Does this sound like someone who's intellectually honest to you? Or someone who wants other people to know the truth? If he did... If he was open to truth, he would not have done that. He would, he would be able to play. Like when we hear a Catholic Truth debunk other people, we play longer clips so you get to hear the full context of what they're saying. And in most some cases, we play, you know, a couple minutes of what they say. Like in our John MacArthur videos, we let him go on and on sometimes, and then we debunk what he says. We don't just take two or three words or even a sentence. And that's because we want people to see both sides and hear both sides honestly. He then goes on on a long rant about how we don't have Christ as our Savior, we reject the cross, we crucify Jesus at every Mass, which <laughs> is really funny, and we've debunked a hundred times on this channel, and for which he cannot prove, by the way. He can't find one single solitary teaching anywhere in the Catholic faith that says we crucify Jesus every Mass. Just doesn't happen because it's not true, and he's spreading false information. But to say that we don't accept Christ as our Savior, and we reject the cross because we can lose our salvation, which is exactly what the Bible teaches, is nonsense. Apparently, he's unaware of the fact that the majority of Protestants even reject eternal security, and once saved, always saved. I mean, all Catholics, all Orthodox, all Christians down through history, and the majority of Protestants reject eternal security. So, it's a small the amount of people who accept it. It's mostly Calvinists. It was invented by John Calvin and people he influenced, like some evangelicals, some Baptists, some non-denominationals, people, and many extremists. But the bottom line is the majority of people, the majority of Christians for all of history, 
have rejected it. It's not a Christian teaching. It's a man-made tradition. And many people fall into it because they themselves are afraid of their own sins. I've heard people say, but if it's not true, then, I mean, I'm a sinner and I sin against God all the time. Well, yeah, you do. That's why Christ died for us. That's why he came to save us. So that anytime we do sin against him, we can run to him and say, Father, forgive me. And we will be forgiven because of what Christ did for us on the cross. As long as we have a true repentant heart and we love him and we want to come to him, he will forgive us. But we can't just pretend to have this Linus security blanket, that this pretend doctrine that's maybe going to damn a lot of people that... You know, pretending that, oh, we're just going to go to heaven because we had faith this one time. No. Nowhere in the Bible does it say once you just have faith, you're automatically going to heaven. It's not biblical. Moreover, I'm sure countless Catholics can post in the comments section below about how they love Jesus, about how he's their savior. I know Catholics have said that before. Even former Protestants who have become Catholic said that they love Jesus. He is their only savior. He's changed their life. And I Prove me wrong. I mean, I bet you Catholics are going to put that in the comment section below because that's what we believe. He is our Savior. Acts 4.12, the only name under heaven by which a person can be saved, Jesus Christ. So we believe he's the only Savior. We believe he's the only way to heaven. We believe faith is the way. We teach that all in our official documents. Moreover, I just posted a conversion story of myself, my reversion of coming deeper to Christ, and it talks about how I was radically transformed just like the Apostle Paul was from Saul to Paul when he was knocked off his horse. He was radically transformed by Christ, and I had a very powerful, radical conversion experience as well, which totally changed my life, filled me to overflowing with the Holy Spirit, and caused me to give up all my sins forever, give up my past, my darkness, my hate, my rage, everything, and give my life to Christ. And from that day on, he's been my Savior, my Lord, my Redeemer, the only one who can save me, bring me to heaven, and I have nothing without him. He's everything to me. But that doesn't make any sense. This was before you came to Christ, before you pledged your love to him, and before you gave your life to him. There it is. The one more sentence in our whole talk. The one more sentence. This man is so dishonest, so intellectually dishonest, you really need to pray for him. I know we just said that about Pastor Stephen Anderson and Walter Vaith and all these extreme anti-Catholics. But there are so many out there and they need your prayers. They might not be saved without them. So according to him, when you get saved, you come to Christ, you pledge your love for him, and you give your life to him. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, let's go ahead and turn there, that Jesus Christ gave his life for us. He's got everything bass backwards, and of course he says this doesn't make any sense. Let's stop here for a second. What was I referring to in this talk? What, in the passage he quoted of me, what was I talking about? Oh, that's right. You wouldn't know. That's right, because he cut it off. Unintellectually, dishonestly, fallaciously, literally, he cut it off so you wouldn't know what I was talking about. The true meaning of what I was saying, I mean, he was just trying to say, oh, this is how Catholics think they need to be saved, which is not what I was actually saying. What I was actually saying, and you can go back and look at the talk, but I was saying that we can't be saved by our good works. And I was referring to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 and 10. And I was saying that this was talking about, this passage is talking about before we come to Christ. It's not talking about saved people. It's talking about before we come to Christ, before we even know Christ. No matter how many good works we do, we can't be saved. No matter how good you are, you can't be saved because we cannot earn salvation. We cannot earn heaven. Heaven is a gift. It's a grace. It's what Christ did for us on the cross. We don't do anything. I mean, if we're going to work to be there, then we have to be perfect because heaven is a place of perfection. So my whole point is that we can't earn salvation. Ephesians 2 is not condemning good works. It's condemning our own works before we came to Christ. Once we come to Christ, yes, then we put our faith in him. We repent of our sins. We love him. We give our life to him. Apparently, this is a bad thing for him, but we give our life to him. And that's how we're saved, through faith and through living out that faith and love for Christ. He has to use bad language because of his unconverted heart, which needs more of a conversion in Christ, but we don't have it backwards. And in fact, this is the biblical model, and this is what Christ himself taught along with the apostles and the tradition that has been passed on from the apostles. So he just made it sound like, oh, we give our lives to Christ and then we're saved. And he said, no, it's faith. It's faith in Christ. We never denied that, but you would not know that because he cut it all off dishonestly. And again, he's trying to pigeonhole an argument that he wants to make without 
actually understanding our beliefs or just ignoring what we actually believe. According to this unsaved Catholic, you have to give your life to Christ or pledge your love for him. That's not what the Bible says about how to be saved. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Oh, okay. So we just have to have faith in Christ and we don't need to love him. Okay, got it. We just need to have faith in Christ, but we don't actually need to give our hearts to him and we don't need to give our lives to him. Okay, got it. Whew. This is easier than I thought to get to heaven. Just put your faith in Christ. Don't do anything. Don't even love him. All right. That's what this guy sounds like. I mean, it's madness. It sounds really sad, actually. And many Protestants, in fact, almost every Protestant would reject this because Protestants constantly talk about giving your life to Christ, giving your heart to Christ, loving him. And even Jesus talks about the necessity of loving him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. Not to mention uh, picking up your cross and following him. Not to mention hating your family and giving up everything for the sake of being his disciple. I mean, Jesus <laughs> said a lot of things about loving God and loving him above all things. So, of course, we need to love God. Of course, we need to have faith in God. Of course, we need to give our lives to him. I mean, yes, it is faith that saves us, but what does that even mean? Does this man even know? It doesn't sound like it because Jesus said faith is going to pass away. Hope is going to pass away. The only thing that truly matters in the end is love. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is the most important thing. And Jesus said that love is love of God and love of neighbor. Those are the two most important commandments. And Jesus said, if you don't follow the commandments, you're not going to heaven. John 14, 15, 1 John 2, 3 through 4, many other passages. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That means you're trusting Jesus Christ to get you to heaven. And if that's the case, no amount of sin can cause you to go to hell. Of course we put our faith in Jesus. Of course we trust Jesus for salvation. Of course we do that. Everything he accuses us of not doing is exactly what we do. And we've made countless videos on this channel showing that the Catholic Church teaches Jesus is the only way to heaven, that we need to put our faith in Christ. It's faith that saves us. It's by his grace. In fact, Acts 15, 11 says we are saved by grace alone. So the Catholic Church teaches salvation by grace, salvation by faith. It's just not an empty faith. It's not an empty faith that does nothing and pretends that it still has salvation. It's a faith that lives itself out in love for Christ, following his commandments by his grace. And lastly, he finishes up by saying that no amount of sin can cause you to go to hell. No amount of sin can cause you to go to hell. That is his own man-made theology. That's not what the Bible says, which is why he cut it off. We showed in Galatians chapter 5 that that whole long myriad of sins will cause you not to enter the kingdom of heaven, meaning hell. Not to mention 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, Revelation 21, Hebrews 10, 26, many, many others. I mean, even... Um, Romans 11, 21 through 22 talks about being cut off if you don't remain in the kindness of Christ. Even uh, uh, Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3 talk about persevering to the end if you want to be saved. And in fact, if you persevere to the end, then Jesus won't blot your name out of the book of life in Revelation 3, 5, meaning that your name can be blotted out of the book of life. Otherwise, why would he say it? The bottom line is there's almost 100 passages saying that you can lose your salvation. We have a whole uh, video debate on this topic with Mike Gendron, if you would like to see it, and others. Um, but we do talk about this at length. We even have a video on what is the gospel and how to be saved. The bottom line is this man's going against the Bible, and many other Protestants agree with that as well. This man is just in a very extreme, extreme category where everything is black and white, but that's how cults operate. Black and white. There's no middle ground. You can't even see outside your own little box. You can't ever find common ground. It's just very extreme. So pray for this man, please. Sincerely, after this video, pray for him. Say a heartfelt prayer for him. In our last video on Pastor Steve Anderson, we begged people to pray for him too. The video before that, Walter Vaith, we begged for people to pray for him too because we shouldn't be hating these people. We shouldn't be angry with them. We should actually feel bad for them because they've been so duped and because they're so angry, misled, lied to, that duped themselves. They have been misled. I mean, if we're going to follow Christ, then we got to follow his example. The, the Pharisees hated, hated Jesus. They were vicious and vehement with him. What did he do? He loved them until 
his death. He loved them to death. He died for them. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We need to have that same love in our hearts. We need to have the same charity, compassion, understanding. He gave them the benefit of the doubt. I would say, of course they know what they did. They were evil, selfish people. But he said, Father, they do not know what they do. He, he knew that they would not do these things if they truly knew the truth. And, and Jack Smack here, he wouldn't be doing or saying what he's saying if he knew the truth as well. Same thing with Pastor Steve Anderson, Pastor Steve Anderson, Walter Vaith, and others. They don't know the truth, and they're confused, and they've been duped. So pray for them. Love them. Love them enough to fast for them. Pray for them, and commit them to your prayer times. Because without your prayers, and without people suffering and sacrificing for them, they may never change, and they may be lost forever. Thank you for so much for watching this video. I, um, I don't know what to say about it, but thank you for watching about it. I don't just, there's so many people out there like this and it's really, really sad. But it's you out there who help us to undo these lies, to have helped so many souls come back to the Catholic Church. We have so many Protestants, former Catholics, anti-Catholics, flooding into the Catholic Church because of our ministry. We receive emails, comments, um, social media comments all the time saying that our ministry was responsible for their conversion to the Catholic faith. They're being uh, coming in this Easter, or they came in last Easter, and like, praise God, some people said we hated your ministry for years, and now because of it, we're coming into the Catholic Church. So thank you to all of our patrons who are doing this good work. We are reaching so many souls. We're saving lives. We're catechizing the masses and we're building up our church because of you. And we need so many more as we're growing so fast. So please, if you can, support our ministry. Consider giving $10 a month, $25, $50, $100, 150 Please give generously because we give all, it all back to the salvation of souls and to the work we do here at Catholic Truth. Because without it, we can't do our work. If you would like us to come to your parish, please check out our website, catholictruth.org. And if you would like to see our social media, follow us for daily inspiration. Check out our Facebook, Instagram, and oh, our um, TikTok, Instagram, all that. But also check out our new uh, YouTube account, which is Catholic Truth Living. And that talks all about life and living, God, relationships, love, dating, engagement, marriage, kids, life, how to, how to successfully navigate it all and how to get to heaven, how to have a happily ever after marriage, how to avoid the potholes that lead to pain, despair, and just not happiness in life. So check out that Catholic Truth Living YouTube channel and its corresponding pages, Catholic Truth Living Facebook, Catholic Truth Living Instagram. Thanks for watching and God bless.